UConn comes into the tournament red hot, winning their last five games. Most, lo- most notably, their win against Houston, 77-71, to who was ranked number 21 at the time. Uh, so with the regular season coming to a close and the season being really harsh with a bunch of gruesome injuries to Tyler Polly and a Cook a Cook, um, I just want to know about your thoughts on the season, especially with the four overtime losses, three and double overtime. I just want to know how you guys, how you guys viewed this year. Well, for me, I predicted before the season that there would be a 21 team and just miss the tournament. It looks like I'm actually going to be right about that, but this team is so much better than I expected. They started the season without Book Knight. At the time, we didn't know how good he was going to be, and it was during that time that they had that awful loss to St. Joe's, which, in hindsight, is costing them being on the bubble Big right time. now because they're, they're one of the worst teams in the country, six and twenty-five. But you know, you mentioned that you, me- you mentioned the close games: Xavier, Wichita State, Villanova, Indiana. If any of those games go the other way, we're talking about UConn, you know, potentially already being, you know, a tournament team if, if a couple of those go the other way. But they didn't, so, you know, they, they, they have to win the tournament basically to get in. Uh, but, you know, to do what they've done without a Cook, without Tyler Pauly, has just been incredible to me. Six and one since the Cook injury. And, you know, the growth of the freshmen have been great. Um, the growth of Whaley. And you know they're they're just a better team than their record shows, nineteen and twelve. But you know they're they they have the talent to compete with any team in the country. So I I I've been very very pleased with this season. Yeah, I mean before the season I predicted that they would make the tournament and that they'd have twenty two wins. So I'm a little below that. But if they have a good week this week, they can help me out, make me look a little <laughs> smart. Time. Yeah. But given what transpired, like you said, like it's so impressive that they are where they are going into the tournament as the hottest team in the yeah. conference. And this and this UConn team has been one that has pumped life back into the program with memorable games such as the Houston game, yeah. the Memphis games, games that UConn fans will remember forever. Memorable plays like the James Book night pick a dunk like alley you yeah, pick on every game, yeah, every the week. dunk over every Precious game. against Memphis, and then moments such as Christian Vital just really stepping it up, put the team on his back, having his UConn guard moment for this year's Husky squad. I know personally, as a senior, this is a season that I'm definitely going to look back on fondly. And I think UConn Nation will look back on this team much like they look back at the 2013 team that did not make, that was banned from the postseason because of the APR scores. Right. Had nothing to play for. They still won 20 games. They would have been in the postseason. A ton of guys transferred out from the national championship team, but they tried hard. They played hard. They won the love of the fan base back. And that's how this team is going to be remembered. Mm-hmm. I agree. So transitioning from the past and looking forward to the tournament, UConn is set to face Tulane Thursday at 3 o'clock in Texas. Uh, what are you guys looking forward to most in the tournament, in the AAC tournament? Well, I think that you know, the Huskies need to sh- continue to show their offensive prowess. Now, early on in the season, early on in conference play, it was that UConn it was one of the worst offensive teams in the league, but their defense was really good. They had a cook blocking shots left and right. They were tough down low. Now, since the cook has gone down, the opposite has been the truth. And that just shows that Dan Hurley is a really good coach, right? Like, yeah. UConn has jumped all the way up from 120 in Ken Palm offensive rating metrics to 60. Wow. All the way up, at, just since the Cook injury. That's like, what, That's seven crazy. games? Seven games, And yeah. they're, they're all the way up to 60. Now, the defense had dropped off a little, but you expect that without player. Yeah. But this is how this team is going to win. They're, they're the number one scoring team in the league. They finished, that's, that's how they finished the season, number one in the league. They need CV to continue to play at just the unbelievable pace. I mean, 27 points per game last week, player of the week, player of the week the week before. Yeah. Hopefully he adds tournament player, uh, most valuable player to the resume. Yeah. Uh, they need Book Knight to contribute in the way that he has just, you know, just unbelievable offensive talent, and that has to all come together now. And Isaiah Whaley needs to be the guy down low. It hasn't been Carlton's year, so Whaley has to step up and be that guy. Um, and they have to continue to run in transition. It's amazing how the team has looked so much better on the break than they did at the beginning of the season. Just shows that they've grown together, they've gotten closer, and the chemistry is there. Yeah, no, absolutely. For, for me, I think the biggest key is they have to show their experience that they have in high-pressure games. Because you mentioned all the overtime games. It seems like every game this season has been like, 
close, down the wire, up four, down four. Mm -hmm. And that, that's what March is all about. Like, it's all about having that experience. And they're just, they're, they're as well battle tested as any team in the conference. So I think that's key. Like, after Tulane, who hopefully, you know, they, they should be Tulane. They're playing, they're going to end up playing three of the top teams mm -hmm. uh, in the conference, barring any other, you know, big upsets. And UConn is either beaten or, you know, uh, pushed to the brink every top, all the top teams, Houston, Cincy, um, Wichita mm -hmm. State. So they played really close games, and I think, I think that, that definitely helps because, like, you know, it, say they get in a situation where they're down two with, you know, a minute ten left to go. They've been in that situation a lot of times this year. And that, that, that type of experience, that's what matters yeah. in March. So that's the key for me. And what's important about that is they were in that situation early in conference play, and they lost all those games. Now they've been winning all those yeah. games, so they know yeah. how to win. Dan Hurley said that this team has figured out how to win those tight games. Exactly. So with that, um, who do you think would be an X factor for this tournament? Uh, it's CV. Uh, it's CV. He's the heart and soul of the team. He, and Hurley said, like six or seven weeks ago, that he flipped a switch. Like he he turned it into another gear. And that that's coincidentally when the team started picking up. Like they're nine and three in their last twelve. Obviously, they won five straight. He's he's been phenomenal during that time, averaging almost twenty five points over that win streak. And you know. He, and he's been fantastic this season, but this week will prove if he's that guy or if he's just a really good player. Like, he will be remembered for this week it, it, when they look back on the time. It, like, if he, has a, if he can put together, like, a UConn-type run, like a 2011-esque run, win four games, four days, it, it'll be, like, Ray Allen, Rip Hamilton, Shabazz... Kemba, CV, like, <laughs> like, 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 like he'll be he'll be up there in that type of conversation if he can put together this, you know, and you know whether he does that or not, we'll have to see. I think he he has the talent. He's one of the most well-rounded players in in UConn history. You know, steals, assists, points. He he's, he does it all. But you know, he's he it, like he needs to be the guy. My who the X Factor is going to be is the referees. Because if they got a tight <laughs> whistle, oh, oh really? No. If they have a tight whistle all tournament. This team is going to struggle. Yeah, they only have eight guys. They only have eight guys, right? Seven and a half. They got to play four straight <laughs> games. Yeah, seven and a half, as Coach Hurley says. Yeah. But they have to stay out of foul trouble. They have two big men. That's it. And if they go yeah. down, then they're just going to get beaten up inside. So they have to just you know play good defense without being overly aggressive. And they've done a good job of that. You know, they've had a short rotation for a few games now. They've done a good job of that. And then also, in terms of, like, an actual player, just anybody off the bench. Somebody's going to have to step up yeah. off the bench and have just double their production, basically, and surprise UConn fans. I'm hoping it's going to be Alterique Gilbert so he can yeah, leave. That would be this, great. If he leaves, he can leave on a real positive note. Um, somebody like Terrence Samuel in 2014, who was just a bull off the bench, gave great production. Somebody has to be that guy. Yeah, it can't just be CV and Book Knight. Right. You know, yeah. like some. If you can get two other guys in double figures, like mm -hmm. they're going to be in great shape. Yes, absolutely. I completely agree. So now for the question that everyone is asking on campus: Does UConn have a chance to win this tournament? They already have had marquee wins against many teams in this league, like I just said, Houston. Mm -hmm. And do you really believe that we have a chance to win? I do think that they they definitely have a chance, right? Like. They're hot. They're the hottest team in the league. And they've beaten everybody, with the exception of Wichita State, yeah. who they would play in the second round. But the thing with that double is, overtime. Double, yeah. A, they lost in double overtime, and B, all the good teams that UConn lost to earlier in the season, they have beaten later on. That's true. With yeah. the exception of Wichita State, because they, they have to play them twice. Yeah. Yes. So, if the pattern is holding true, then UConn will beat Wichita State, and then hopefully get to face Cincinnati for one final matchup. There's been many memorable AEC tournament games against Cincinnati, of course. But, I mean, th this is what we wanted. They are hot going into the tournament. This is as good as... Do I think they're going to win? Unfortunately, I don't. I think they're just going to run into some tough loss, another close loss. But they're going to gain valuable experience in the NIT, which, you know, UConn fans and NIT, like, you know, throw up on your mouth. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but this is going to be good for the future. Trust me. Yeah, no, I, I, I agree with you there. I don't think they win the tournament. It's, they're going to run into, like you said, a close game. It, this is just inevitable. They're going to make it to the semis. They're going to lose in overtime to Cincinnati. Like that, that's just that, 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 you, you just you, you get the feeling about that team that, about this team that that's just how this season is gone. You know they get so close 
and they'll lose by one point. But but you know if they do happen to if they do happen to you know win it, it's gonna be you know it's gonna be because somebody else steps up, like you said, like you know somebody other than CB and Book Knight. It's gonna be like Brendan Adams, mm -hmm. Carlton, hopefully Alterik. Like I feel like Alterik might have a moment in this tournament. I do too. Like, I really like do. you know like like he might because he's just had been plagued with injuries. Came in as a McDonald's All American, right. and he just has like you just you you you've got to root for that guy. Right. So if they do if they do win the tournament, it'll be because of uh you know because of you know having the depth mm -hmm. but yeah I, I don't think i don't think that they win the tournament unfortunately well obviously um everyone is really excited here to watch the tournament and see how everything plays out and i just want to thank everyone for uh joining us for the american comic preview show and to follow our content on youtube instagram and um twitter and let's go huskies <laughs>